Alright guys, in this video we built a 1440p gaming PC for a thousand pound and at this price point it performs amazing and not only that but it looks aesthetically pleasing too. You'll be watching us build the PC, benchmark the PC and at the end of the video I'll be giving you guys my recommendations on how you can replicate this build at a similar cost even despite the RAM prices going up a lot at the moment. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Alright, so for the motherboard we're using a Gigabyte B650M S2H which we picked up for £69.98 from a company called CCL Computers which is a UK retailer. This was a B grade item so it was a little bit cheaper than buying it brand new. And for the CPU we're using a Ryzen 5 7500F which we picked up from AliExpress for £95.44. I've said this for a long time and I'll still say it now, this is one of the best value AM5 CPUs on the market. For RAM we're using this crucial DDR5 Pro kit clocked at 6000MHz CL36, so not the best but still quite good for the price we paid, which was only £59.98 earlier this year on AliExpress, let's be honest, you're not getting it for that price now. For storage we're using a crucial P3 Plus 1TB which we got from AliExpress for £39.69 and we are actually just installing our benchmark SSD here because I already know the SSD works as well as all the components so we did go straight in with just getting the benchmarks done. And for the case we're using the Antec CX600M which is a micro ATX case and we went with the black with a wood grain kind of panel on it which I thought turned out looking really good. Overall I'm very happy with this case and it only cost us £67.86 and that's with three pre-installed fans and a massive shout out to Antec for actually the small finer details. They actually put two reverse blades in on the side left which a lot of companies get lazy and don't bother and you have to flip the fans so it looks worse. Well at least especially at the under £70 price point. And for cooling, I decided to go for this Thermal Right Frozen Knotty 360mm AIO. I think I've just butchered the name of the Knotty or however you say it. However, for only £50.79, I literally just thought, why not? Of course, the Ryzen 5 7500F does not need a water cooler. Any half decent £20 air cooler would do a great enough job. But I wanted the aesthetics to look really good on this build. Overall, it seems like a really decent AIO but I'm not too happy with the mounting. I do prefer when they come with their own brackets. For the power supply we decided to go for this MSI Mag A750GL which we picked up from Amazon for £74. Now this actually comes with a 12 volt high power cable rated at 450 watt so you could easily put a 5070Ti into this rig with this power supply. Overall for this price it's a great power supply and it is fully modular as well so you're going to have less cable mess in the back. And last but not least, for the graphics card we're using this MSI RTX 5070 Gaming Trio. It's a pretty nice looking card and it did cost us £537.97 including shipping. But that was quite a while ago I bought this and this was actually in my main rig for a little bit. At least until the white version dropped in price. So I picked that up and now I've ended up with a 5080. So yeah, I might as well put this in a build and at least make some money from it. Thank you. 
And here is how the PC turned out. Overall, I'm really happy with the looks as well as the performance of the PC, which we'll get to in a minute. But the total cost for this build was £1,006.08. And eight pence, so we could have saved some money and been under a thousand if we went for a tower cooler instead of a water cooler. However, I have no regrets with this build, and I think for the price, it's turned out amazing. But now for the important part the gaming benchmarks. All right, so to kick things off, we play some Fortnite at 1440p on performance mode. Now, I know not everyone plays on performance mode, but I just really wanted to see how much FPS we could really push this rig to. And performance mode is the best case for that. Now, in creative mode, we were actually getting really good FPS. Whilst building, we were getting around 500 to 530. Now, of course, in game, we're going to get much less or at least a fair bit less. Creative doesn't seem as optimized as it used to be. You used to get near enough double your FPS. But we did spend a bit of time building because this old man needs a warm up before he actually hops in game. But overall, in creative, the FPS was really good. And the same can be said about in game as well. But when it came to in game, we were seeing an average of around 430, which for some reason seemed a little bit high to me. My benchmark the other day, I could not get it to be anything higher than 380, so I guess this was just a lucky game. But you can definitely expect anywhere between 350 to 400 with this rig, and you may get even slightly better average FPS as well as 1 and 0.1% lows if you had some RAM with tighter timings or if it was overclocked and you were manually tuning the timings yourself. But overall, this PC is perfect for a competitive game like Fortnite, even at 1440p. Alright, so Cyberpunk 2077 next, and all games are tested at 1440p by the way. We played on a high preset with no upscaling, and we were getting around 107 FPS for our average, with our 1% lows being 85 and 0.1 being 77. So very smooth and decent frame rates all across the board. And Cyberpunk can be quite demanding, so it is nice to see that this PC is absolutely handling it fine. We then did switch over to the same preset of high but with DLSS set to quality and even with it set to quality we were seeing a pretty large FPS increase up to 150 FPS on average so around a 40 FPS increase over no upscaling. Our 1% and 0.1% lows weren't massively improved over no upscaling version but it's nice to see that Regardless of the setting you're going to use, whether that's upscaling or just native, this game does run great. Next up is GTA 5 Enhanced, which we played at the maximum RT setting, and we played with no upscaling initially. At these settings, we were seeing around 100 FPS on average, with our 1% and 0.1% lows remaining pretty good as well so that indicates that there was very little stuttering and it was overall a smooth experience there is this weird thing with gta for some reason at least from my experience that when you're playing native it looks worse than when you're using some sort of upscaling like dlss i don't know if the video really replicates what i'm seeing on when i'm gaming myself but we did actually go ahead and switch over to dlss quality which gave us about a 20 fps on average uh, boost you will see our 0.1% lows took a hit for some reason but normally you've just got to reset the metric and they're fine when you're changing the settings around it you can when you are changing settings around it can cause an initial stutter when you apply them or even when you open a map or the settings panel but yeah it, overall it performed really well I spent a good bit of time annoying this cyclist and running them over and beating them up but anyway that was GTA 5 and overall it ran perfect. Next up we played Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p on the extreme preset. And overall we got a really really solid FPS. Our average was around 160 with no stuttering whatsoever. 1% lows at 138 and 0.1% lows at 123. So very smooth and that's the same across many of these games we played. We've had zero issues with stuttering or just horrible kind of gameplay so yeah Forza Horizon 5 once again is another game that runs absolutely beautifully on this PC and on the extreme preset at 1440p it looks amazing too. Next we played Indiana Jones and the Great Circle 
and we played at a high setting with DLSS set to quality. Overall, it was a pretty good experience. Of course, we wasn't seeing massively large uh, FPS numbers, but overall pretty respectable for a game that is quite demanding and I believe requires like a 3060 to even run the game properly. So overall, Indiana Jones definitely run quite good. Alright guys, so that's about it for the video. I'm really happy with this PC, but now for the final thing, I wanted to tell you guys how you can try and replicate this build. Now we all know that the whole PC market is going to crap right now. Uh, RAM prices have like quadrupled. SSD prices have gone up as well. Uh, I'm seeing like SSDs for one terabyte Gen 4 SSD being about £84 on Amazon. Whereas just a few weeks ago, you could find them for about £60, maybe even slightly less. So it is going to be hard to replicate this build. But I'm going to give you guys some tips on how you can. Now when I say replicate, I don't mean part for part. Because obviously, I will just put on screen like right here. How much it would cost you if you bought all these parts on Amazon. The only thing that's different in that listing is the 8400F. Which I don't recommend you go and do. I don't recommend you copy this basket here. The 8400F is inferior to the 7500F. I just put it there as a way to like a place marker kind of thing because I couldn't find the 7500F. You could actually save yourself £30 by getting the 7500F if AliExpress have them on sales. Now the only thing I'm going to say about AliExpress at the moment is I can't find any good deals. Just the same as all the UK retailers or anywhere else you'd get your parts. The prices have increased there as well. And for some reason not just RAM and SSDs. All their CPU deals and motherboard deals have gone up a little bit as well. But you could find a 7500F for as low as about £85 on net if the time is right. And roughly around 90 to 100 quite often. But at the moment not so much. They look about 120 which is kind of matching what we've got in the basket for the 8400F. Now, the other thing as well with the RAM prices, there's no way to avoid it really. Unless you find someone selling one in on your local marketplace, whether that's Facebook, OfferUp or anywhere, depending where you live in the world, you may be able to find a 32 gigabyte kit for less than, you know, what we're good having to pay on amazon so if you can find one for under 200 quid or under 220 quid that's decent go for it other than that i've seen videos of people talking about ddr5 on single stick so single channel ram isn't as bad as ddr4 so if that's your only option and in the basket that i did put for how to replicate for a close price I did change that, so I put a single stick, same speed and same latency, just 16 gigabytes, which does suck, yes, but it is one way to bring the cost down, as well as changing the uh, water cooler to a uh, single tower cooler. Uh, Ryzen 5 7500F only draws about 65 watts, so a single tower cooler will be fine. We also changed the case to one that was slightly cheaper by £10, and the same for the power supply, still 750 watts, but not the fully modular with the 12 volt high power cable. But that's the best way you're going to be able to replicate it using Amazon is just cutting these corners, unfortunately. But anyway, enough rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.